Welcome. Tiny Ann's Big Dreams here on the homestead. We're going to do a little bit about animal care, medical care. And we see a lot of a very kind of divisive, you're, you're here, you're there, you can only do it this way, only that way. There's two schools of thought. Um, there's the very more natural thought of, of, of only doing natural things and only this, and, and it is, it's a way. There's also the, I just blanket do all the pharmaceutical meds um, on a schedule, on a thing, just whatever they need, kind of without thought for... The, the whole picture. So there's, and a lot of people will call it holistic care versus conventional. I don't really like either of those terms, um, personally. I think holistic is, is a little bit of a bigger picture than some of the people who approach medical care in that way sort of see it. Um, they're more of like your, your herbs and your tinctures and your things. I'm not saying those are bad. Um, but then you also have your, your, what they call conventional, which is a silly word. Um, <laughs> cause conventional used to be not pharmaceutical and now pharmaceutical has become convention, which is a different, it's a very recent conventional. It's very interesting. Um, and that gets into more of the commercial way of raising animals, which is your dewormers on a schedule without any consideration for the whole picture of the animal. There is just, you know, you feed them exactly what you are told to feed them. You, you treat them in exactly this particular way. Um, Sometimes again, lifelong, that, lifelong yeah. antibiotics. Yeah, without a lot of, of thought for the, the whole animal. So we, in case you couldn't figure this out, fall somewhere in the middle, as we do with a lot of things. <laughs> there is middle ground. There um, is. Even if maybe it doesn't seem that way on the internet um, yeah. or, or in life. No, there, there's, there's a wonderful middle ground. Um, so we're going to talk about it. We're going to give us some examples. We're going to go look at some of our animals and go through yeah. some of the things we've dealt with. So all of this starts with our basic principle to begin with is good health. And this doesn't just apply to our animals. Most of this also applies to us. Let's be real. Um, we'll focus on the animals today, but a lot of it does definitely apply to us and our, our ways of, of handling our own medical care. Um, start with good health. Start with good diet. Um, generally, healthy animals are able to ward off anything that happens to them. It's true. It's just proven. And if something happens, they heal quickly. Yeah. Um, but in general, they just... Yeah. Good health uh, leads to a lot of things. Yeah. So good health first. And then... Because things do happen even to the healthiest animal or person. Um, basically, what we do... And, and we'll show this in all the examples. Is we start with the most natural... Um, least consequences. Least ramifications or side effects. Uh, first... So we'll always start with the most natural approaches. And then if those don't work and the problem progresses into something where we think that our natural solutions are not solving the problem, we're not afraid to turn to other answers. We do. We do hold off. We do wait. We, we discuss we it. We mm, like uh, sometimes we'll get right up to that edge of like, should we, should we not? Should we, should we not? And, and if we don't, um, will, will the animal die? Yeah. And we'll, we'll get we'll get pretty close trying to make sure that, that we can... But we are also not so die hard that we will never use, say, an antibiotic um, just because we have, like, this, this very, like, I don't know, pervasive principle in us of, like, don't use an antibiotic. And I know some people just say absolutely no, no antibiotics ever. But at the risk of losing an animal, it... I'm going to weigh those and I'm going to say the antibiotic is a better choice. We've had some, some, some incidences here. Um, yeah. And, and let's give a little bit of a, a, a better overall idea of, of what we deal with. Okay. Um, we let's give you the big picture. We have particular issues with our animals here. We live in Southern Ecuador. It is warm. It's, it's not, moist. it's not hot. It's not like, it's not like crazy Amazonian jungle. It's, we're, we're but, upper mountains but we're Amazonia. we have no winters um it's tropical that means that pretty much our main problem is bugs insects of multiple varieties and sizes um that's pretty much what we deal with yeah as far as more emergency medical care um things that maybe you have never seen before that we had never dealt with before i mean we've got our the parasites 
which are everywhere parasites to deal with. We do not have a winter that kills them off. Yeah. So there's that. Um, I don't know if it's any worse here than anywhere else, but um, probably not. I mean, everywhere has their their seasons. Um, we're just kind of in perpetual spring summer. Yeah. Which has its benefits, has mm. its detractions. So we have we have bot flies. I think I conceptually knew the bot flies existed in the world. Um, never really you don't, thought a lot about it. You don't want to know about bot flies. So quickly, I guess we should say, because this is a medical care type of video, if you're super squeamish, you might. You don't want to. You don't want to listen. Um, we don't have anything super graphic to show you, but we're going to talk about it because it's reality of raising animals. Um, bot flies. <laughs> I hate them so much. <laughs> Uh, so number one biggest problem. I yeah, think. they they're the there's a fly, um, and it will come along and it will lay an egg on another insect to be deposited on an animal. The the egg like melts its way. No, it it just um, basically any any mammal birds are not affected. Yeah, any mammal. Um, say a mosquito has the the eggs on it. Mosquito lands to to bite the animal. The eggs sort of like fall off. Um, they're attracted to warmth. They'll stick on the animal. And then when they hatch, they burrow into the animal and grow large. Yeah, yeah they'll and get disgusting. They'll get I well. Mean, I mean, they'll get this big. Yeah, we, we've we've never gotten them past no, a little over an inch, maybe. Yeah. Um, and they'll make a lump, and there's not really a hole at that point. There's 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 a pinhole. Yeah, they, the the larva has to breathe, so there's a hole that it leaves. Um, and you, you, you rub the goat and you're like, there's a lump in your, oh, there's a lump in your skin. Took us a while to figure out what they were. Yeah. Um, we have, I mean, we have pretty solid methods. It, it's not hard. It's just not fun. You basically just go squeeze it out. Yeah. And the worm has, the, if you look larva. at it, micro, yeah. Um, the larva, if you look on a microscope, it has little ridged like barbs all over its head so that it doesn't want to come back out. So squeezing it actually does some internal damage and it doesn't squeeze out easy and you just have to sort of work it and work it and work it. And the different goats have different skins. Um, some are harder and easier to get them out. Some seem more susceptible to the bot flies. Yeah. It's weird. But, um, but you got to get it out. Yeah. Um, you can't squeeze so hard that you explode it internally because then it just turns into gnarly infection. And sometimes they'll chew at it and they'll break it. And then, and then that becomes highly and then that's infection. Then the hole opens up, and then you get. Well, so um, that that leads us on to. Well, that leads us on to Sally. Sally. Hey, Sally. I love Sally. <laughs> I'll get Sally. Come here, Sally. So this is Sally. She is a wonderfully lovable goat. Sometimes. Um, Sometimes they all have their own personalities, don't they? She has. She has personality. Um, now, Sally. For whatever reason versus some of the other goats seems to be more susceptible to the bot fly um back goat rarely yeah. sally uh, she just gets them um, she also gets the secondary infections that um that are really the problem for her so the bot flies while annoying if we get them out they seem to heal okay um for whatever reason her body doesn't doesn't process you know whatever's left in there after even squeezing them out. Yeah. There's, there's there was one. And it was on her. Come here, Sally. Right here. Well, the, the bad one was right on her spine. Yeah, it was just it was just on the side. And she had chewed at it. Um, and we, we tried to get what was there out. And, it, and then there was kind of a, a big uh, half of a, I don't know, racquetball lump. Oh, it was terrible. So, she had one on her leg, too, and it swelled up so bad. Um, it was so infected, she had a hard time walking. And it, um, it, it had swelled, terrible. and we're like, wow. Well, so we're trying to squeeze it, trying to get the, the infection out, trying to deal with that. Um, we so, have some topical antibiotics that yeah, we would so use. Basically, the way we... Oh, just the way we approach that is physically removing the infected materials. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's my least favorite job. Um, so we did that. And then we gave her colloidal silver, which is kind of our first 
depth. If you've never played with colloidal Quite silver, um, it's pretty cheap to make. You, 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 it's, it's voltage and some silver and water. Um, it's kind of amazing. And there are certain things that it will just knock out right away. Um, works as an antibiotic. Isn't chemical in nature. It is simply a physical micro silver in water. It won't cause any resistance because yeah. that's the main issue um, um, and concern. There's no side effects. If you got an eye infection, it is safe to just spray in the eye. We use it for ourselves. We um, for every animal we've ever had. Sort of magical. That's great. So, so we gave her big doses um, orally of colloidal silver. She was really struggling with it. Uh, we did do topical antibiotic. We're I'm more comfortable with a topical antibiotic than I am something systemic. There's a lot less side effects. So we would do, we would do that. Um, it got it got real questionable. So we it, talked about giving her it penicillin. Grew, and then it started to spread under her skin yep. as, as the infection, like, and it would just overnight, just whoop, bigger. And we'd squeeze it back kind of down yep. and she'd get rid of it. And then it would spread again. And as soon as it got a little too much, it would just spread further. And it made it, like, it was starting to just kind of spider under her skin and we're like ah and we kept going well if it's any worse we'll have to give her penicillin if it's any worse if it's any worse but i was i was just I really don't want to do that um there's just there's there's issues with that and I'm, I'm so uncomfortable so with this it. is one of those this is like where we'll push it right up to um we we try not to on the antibiotics we've had personal serious side effects ramifications from antibiotic use um it is not without um, a, a pretty serious need that, that we will go there. Yeah, there are risks. So um, a lot of people are like, oh, antibiotics. I'll just take some. Oh, you got to this. You got to sniffle us. <sighs> uh, and then you get to the other side of that when something does go wrong, and everyone's like, oh, well, it should have been fine. I don't know why you had a problem. It's totally safe. Eh, except yeah. all the times it's not. So, so that that was a. I don't know I was pretty proud of that one that that worked out. And um, we did. And we, we managed to. Just we got it finally chased back. Um, and we got her it to body heal up. was able to, to really process it and deal with it. Which take care of could it. have been like one last little piece of, of that bot yeah. fly like was in there and, and, and her body just couldn't get rid of it. So it was just continuing the infection. So the colloidal silver is a, a solid first step there. Yeah, if you don't know about it, um, gosh, it, it's worth, uh, you, you can buy little bottles of it um, from, there's reputable vendors all over. We, we make our own. Uh, at that, if you start using it in any sort of quantity, it becomes much cheaper just to just to make it. Yep. So then let's talk about Sassy because that was Sassy is daughter of Sally. Ooh. Yeah. Let's go get Sassy. Let's go get Sassy. So this is Sassy, Sassafras. Um, a very cute little goat. <laughs> so. When she was, oh gosh, week, two weeks, a like week very, thing. very, very fresh, very fresh. She had a bot fly infection and being a daughter of Sally, wasn't handling it super well. She had many, um, many bot flies. Did she have many? Oh, she had many. And just, just being so young, so small, her little body was struggling to process them. No, well, not that little one. Um... And she really, really struggled to process them and deal with them. And we did all the same things. We did the colloidal, we did the topical. We were not winning. No, and she just she just started to look weak. Um, and we were just fighting a bunch of little little infection spots. Um, so on her, we, we did finally decide that we're going to use um, some antibiotics and penicillin. Yep. And we did her a few doses of that, and she... She just, she perked right back up. Knocked the infections, perked right back up. She got a good solid start um, in life, all of a sudden became stronger. And then after that, we've never had to do that, uh, yeah. that again. Oh, you need know, all the rotten She's fine. fruit. So that's, that was not the way we prefer to do things, but I think it was the correct choice because otherwise we very well may have lost the little goat. It's true. So that's just an example of, it doesn't always go well, perfectly, um, with animals or with a holistic approach. Sometimes timing, um, and we had that with Mrs. Piggles, we'll get into, to, we had a thing with her, and, and pigs are more difficult, one, they're free. <laughs> they're well, not, in our case, they we are. can't, we don't, we don't have any way of, like, containing or controlling them. Um, 
too. They're, they're pigs. They live in, in mud. Yeah. But timing played very much into the, how, we, how we worked the treatment. Um, yeah. Because otherwise, a lot of people raise pigs, and they'll literally, if you look up commercial schedules, they just feed them antibiotics from birth to death. Or sorry, two a, weeks before death. And that's true of a lot of animals. Um, and we've yeah. we, um, used for the very first time antibiotics on our pigs. And we're... Yeah. Well, and Sassy was the first antibiotic use we've, I think, on any of our animals. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't ideal, but it was what needed to happen to save her. Yeah. So, that's Sassy. So, we get into uh, general health and, and keeping that up and medications. Yeah, a little um, less of the emergency care, but just the But the things you do to prevent care. the emergency care. Um, there's some things we will go to. Um, copper. After reading the studies on goats and their necessity for copper and how it helps them, after watching the signs of copper deficiencies sort of appear in them. Well, our, our first clue to that, um, no one here that we've encountered gives their goats copper. Um, they also seem to often have problems with um, birth rates, like ever getting pregnant, um, having more than one. Like, they're just... I've heard great. from soil tests that copper is just freakishly low yeah. um, in this part of Ecuador. Yeah. So when our, our does were just not getting pregnant, I don't know why, uh, that was kind of our clue into to copper. So um, I, I know that in the goat, holistic goat world, the, um, the mineral buffet is like the big deal. It's not, it's not feasible for us. It wouldn't work for a multitude of reasons. Um, I see what people do and I think that their goats must be so nice and well behaved. Um, if we put out a selection of different minerals for the goats, one, they would knock them over. Two, they would pee in them. Three, they would just eat the wrong ones. I just, I don't think our goats are... And then Sally wouldn't touch any of them because somebody else has licked it. She won't eat anything that someone else has touched or licked. And not just licked, but like nose touched. You no. take a banana and just, no. So I understand that it works for a lot of people. It would not work for us, nor do we have access to all of the minerals separately that they would need. Um, we do give them a mixed combo mixed mineral, mineral um, which sometimes they want. They don't really want a whole lot of. Sometimes um, they don't. Which goes back to the the health, the diet. They have a yeah. very a very varied diet, <laughs> so they're not just you know sitting and eating hay. Um, they get no hay. They get no hype, but that's, yeah. Um, so, so they eat grass, they eat trees, they eat bark, they eat whatever they want. Um, they seem to be very healthy because of that. We do give them um, a copper bolus, sort of, kind of, every six months. Sometimes it's 12 months. We just kind of look at them, we, we judge them um, based off of signs, you know, how healthy they look, their coats, things like that. Um, we, we did a video on how to give goats copper bolus actually yeah works pretty well works pretty well um so then as you might imagine one of the topics is vaccines you know it's a touchy subject um people don't like this subject no matter who you are you don't want to talk about it um we do not vaccinate any of our animals more or less with one exception with one exception <laughs> um you know you'll hear all the i don't know about pigs honestly if there's a lot of I'm sure commercial uh, production of pigs there are. The homestead there usually isn't, I don't think. I honestly don't know. Here, no. Yeah. Um, the goats are supposed to have their, what, CDT, something, something, tetanus, something. Um, no, we don't do that. We're generally speaking, not big believers in vaccinations. No, um, um been been it's a long conversation that is probably close best witness not, to some of the, the dark is, sides of what can happen it's probably best not to have on the youtube if you know you, yeah <sighs> so our one <laughs> the world we live in now yeah so our one exception for the animals is very location specific we gave all of our goats um rabies vaccine we have yeah. um yeah, go ahead. yeah we have uh bats here and mostly bats are cool and they eat bugs and you watch them fly around. And then we found out um, the goats were getting these holes in them. Perfect little round, sharpie sized holes. And like, man, and they didn't make a noise, they didn't think. And I thought it must be some sort of insect with like, like it was just chewing on them at night because they were just, they were just out and about in the, you know, the grass. 
Um, and the one vet's like, oh, it's, it's, it's bats. And I'm like, no, it's not like, it's not like fangs. It's not things. It's not a slice. It's, it's just like this perfect little, like, Scoop like, of their like a little melon yeah, baller is missing. Um, well, and then it started happening to the pigs, which is when it kind of clued us in like, wait, what? what's going on? Yeah. Um, well, then it, you actually saw the bat. Right. So vampire bats, um, Jerks. like that's the thing from the cartoons. Jerks. They exist. They're they're tiny. They're little. They're mean. Yeah, they're it's like literally them. a mouse with wings. Um, but they come over and they, they chew a little hole and they drink the blood. Um, well, one, it's rude. I'm just I have it's personal really rude. like. Can you leave my animals alone? Yeah. Who they carry rabies, which every so often they uh, apparently there was one that was like 15 or 20 years ago. They said that there was uh, rabies just it just spreads in a flush because once an animal gets it, then other bats will get it from that animal in subsequent feedings. And it'll spread and it'll just wipe out the livestock of a part of the country. Um, and that apparently happened some time ago. And it is also um, spreadable to humans. Through saliva. Which, if you've ever had goats, if you, you, you can't get them to stop licking you if they want to lick you. Um, bat goat likes to, funny enough, bat goat, um, she likes to lick us a lot. She's very friendly and loving. And, and then I realized, like, this is, this is not going to work out for us. Right, so, so we gave we did a rabies um, vaccination on all the goats. Yeah, we would like, in a perfect world, to give that to our pigs as well. They get bit more often than the goats at this point. You ever give a pig a shot? Have you ever given a not tremendously friendly pig a shot? I don't. Who is to. not contained in any way? Mm. I, I mean, don't they're they're to. friendly up until you jab them with a needle. Yeah, I mean, I I, I am too. I don't. It mm. could end poorly for one of us. Yeah. So we're still figuring out if and how to do that. Um, now, uh, while that is a risk to them, it is less of a risk to us because they don't lick us. Um, we don't. Will be tries. But, but uh, yeah, a little, a little dangerous. Um, so the, the goats became then a risk to us. So that was, that was our decision there. Um, there's also not a lot of known or researched risks to the vaccine uh, for rabies course there's risk to everything it just wasn't a highly um dangerous one yeah so we thought that was that was worthwhile given our specific um not just that we have bats in ecuador but literally on our property we've seen them yeah it's not a potential and risk it, it is, is a not, literal active we're not worried about thing. them for us I mean, no. it's not like a scary thing. oh my god there's bats no look like if you have a flashlight they're afraid it's of light crazy. if we walk out to the pigs and, and they're they're out there and I, I hold the light up there, they're gone. Like they, they want nothing to do with light. But they just, just want sleeping, warm things out in nature. Yep. Don't be one of those things, I guess. Don't be one of those things. <laughs> so that, that's our one vaccine. Everything else is a, a no-go for us at this point. Uh, deworming is a, an issue. I know in a lot of the U.S., chemical dewormers are basically you don't use them or you have to test them for parasites before you use them. Testing here isn't available um, no. as far as, you know, fecal counts and things. Oh, you have to do this. You have... It's just not available. Um, we're also in a place that doesn't have a lot of other um, animals as far as like commercial. So we don't have the resistances built up by people using those things over and over here. Um, because that's why they become resistant is because they been overused that the the chemical dewormers have been overused and overused and overused and they're kept um, in the same spaces yeah. over and over so that, that causes the problem we don't have that problem um we again general health of an animal they should be able to handle whatever parasite load that they have that's the theory we give them the occasional plantain and banana leaf which Actually, there's research, there's research show. showing that the, the the plantain leaves actually act as a is a they help suppress uh, a lot of the parasites, and they love them. And they, we have them here in abundance. They yeah. So we do that, and then we do uh, we do use ivermectin and um, fenbendazole. Yep. As our two dewormers, we don't just give it to them like regularly. We look for signs for symptoms. Um, we try to pay attention to them. We know our animals. We know when one of them is off. Yeah. So that's, um, that's a big part of what we do is we don't, we're not just, um, we don't just have a field, you know, half a mile away that we don't pay attention to. And then 
when one goes down, that's too late. So we look at them, we're like, you're, you're not feeling well today, or your poop's slightly off, you're this, you're that. We watch them, and okay, sometimes they just recover, it's fine. Um, we, we really wait for their, there is an actual need um, yeah. to try some other stuff. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe you're just feeling under the weather, the parasites have sort of taken over a bit. Yeah, we'll not go back down. We'll knock um, it down. The only other thing I, I wanted to bring up, because it's important, again, because of where we live, um, we have probably a million potentially toxic plants to goats. You know, we don't even know. list of, like, toxic plants. Things you should remove from your goat area. Ooh, jungle. I don't know what any of this stuff is. The so, goats know what they are better than we do. Occasionally, I believe that one either eats a funny bug on a plant, which I know has happened. We know it's happened. If you've ever had a goat eat a stink bug, you'll you'll know. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. So, there's bugs that they'll uh, occasionally ingest. There might be a weird plant that they eat. They test it and it is not good and it makes them slightly sick. So, again, knowing our animals. There was one day where a bat goat, who I know very well. Um, she's, she's my favorite goat. She's my goat. I know her. I know her personality. I'm like, she's just, she's just weird. She's just slow and quiet and not feeling so good. She's not really eating much. I'm like, okay, well, we'll, we'll give her some clay. Clay is um, bentonite clay. Calcium bentonite clay. Uh, another is, thing, if you've never played with it, looked at it, you need to. Um, it is actually proven, there, there was a study I read that it is actually more effective at removing toxins than activated charcoal, which is what everybody says to use specifically for goats. Messy. Uh, like humans, there's a lot of humans that will swear by it. Um, I swear by it. Internally and externally. Yeah. Um, we have used it with magical effect. It works on poison ivy. Which we are the super sensitive people to poison ivy, and sometimes you get one and it's under the skin and you can't get rid of it. And, and we had one going on weeks, months. She takes clay and all of a sudden it just dries up yep. and it's gone. So nothing, it's incredibly important. Nothing else helped as much. Um, we keep it around. First line of defense, you keep weird tummy problems and goat's poo is slightly off. Give it some, give it some bentonite clay and water. A little tiny bit does the job. It doesn't hurt them, they don't care about it. They don't even mind drinking it most of the time. And we've had goats totally turn around within hours. So those are the two um, natural remedies we keep on hand all, at all times for us, for the goats, for the pigs, for the dogs. It's amazing everybody. how much of medical care is solved with those two natural substances. Yeah. All right. So then we're going to get into pigs real quick and give some examples on some things we've had to deal with with the pigs, which are different. They're a little harder to handle than the goats. Yeah. Just by nature of their their pigness. 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 Let's go see the pigness. All right. Oh, oh good that shot. was a good shot. Wow. <laughs> That's... Did you right or left hand that? Right hand. So there's Mrs. Piggles. And her second set of wiggles. Um, and she sits upon her tuffet, and she's not going to come over here. So, she's background. Now, we did a couple of videos on Mrs. Piggles, um, the birth, um, and the problems. Let's touch on the medical side of that. So, we thought there were seven. She seemed done. We come back in the morning, there's an eighth piglet. We think that she, that one got stuck. Like a leg went sideways or something and took a very long time to come out. And she labored all night um, between that and the placenta. She ran herself out of energy. We think it did internal tearing damage on its way out. And then she sort of just went down. It's internal. We can't see it. We didn't know. Like she's tired. Of course she's tired. We realized um, it had gotten pretty serious. And that's, that's that timing thing again. Right. So we, we realized one, um, she has internal things. There's there's definitely infection now. She's swelling really badly. There was um, multiple days after birth, which you, you expect swelling directly after. This was after birth. And it was getting bigger. And then the insects yeah. so attacked, we, and we got fly strike. And the the actual the so that now we had insects internally um, eating up living and dead tissue, and she wasn't feeling up to enough to even wave them off. Yeah. So the insects here. 
take off very quickly. Um, they did a little piglet too. So we realized that we're, we're going to lose Mrs. Piggles. And by that token, probably the, the, the piglets, which are days old, week old. Yeah, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard road to try to. Without knowing, yeah, <laughs> yeah the level of internal damage, um, without knowing and everything that's gone wrong, is there, is there things, and now we've got insects that are boring through her that could cause a perforation internally, cause her to go septic. Yeah, um, the, the internal insects became a, a pretty scary situation very, very quickly. Very quickly. So we opted um, to go with doxycycline. Um, and we went down to the local veterinarian place, and he had it, but it was slightly more expensive. So I went across the street to the pharmacy and asked them for their 200 milligram um, pills, which you can just buy here without a prescription, which is good. So I got the dosage that was needed, um, checking through through some of the uh, uh, the state extension sites. Um, different universities have posted uh, information on that. So we put her through a five-day antibiotic regimen. Now, her it is important to say we, we did try all of the natural things. This was... Um, now, we have a couple specific uh, uh, products that we use. Yeah. But we don't call them by a specific name. We call it purple spray. Purple spray <laughs> is not our favorite thing to use for multiple reasons. Um, it is in... Uh, what is it? purple uh, spray yeah but what is it so uh, it's a it's a spray with it's got uh, an insecticide a larvicide uh, an insect repellent an antibiotic it's got um, basically everything else. and it's basically a, a solution in a can for your average farmer rancher whatever to go up well they use it here for the bot flies yeah um they just kill the bot flies on the cattle so um we did try that um externally which did ward off some of the the insects now again it's for a minute like it's not my favorite thing and then use. she went and she took her private parts and then rubbed them in the mud so that stuff burns yep um also she had internal problems internal problems are internal and we got as, as much as we could to to but it's internal no the bugs had gone past that um we weren't we weren't getting them no so um we had the the antibiotic but I also had the realization that if if it's internal, we may be able to use um, a dewormer, an anti-parasite, to combat those. It was also not a bad thing to give her, given the amount of stress she was under. So, so we, we looked that her... up, and, and I found um, a protocol for triple therapy, um, which was a combination of... of uh, it was actually for cancer patients in, in India that had fly strike uh, maggot... Um, ingress uh, on their like on their head neck area because of the cancer things and they were aged um so they went with the triple therapy and i'm like okay which normally we don't cross dewormers at the same time um but we went with an ivermectin febendazole albendazole 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 is the one that's safe or this gets confusing there's a couple of different versions and there's one you can't use in the early pregnancy um, and it made me nervous. I don't know. We used one of them. So we looked it up. We, we found the protocol. And then the doxycycline um, to, to give her a, a head start on the internal infection. Like, had to kill the bugs. Had to kill their infection. Give her a chance to heal. So we did this. Um, now, with, how did we do this? And some light sprays of the purple spray just as a warding off of the insects to keep... From... Now, before all of this, we were using colloidal. I did do the... Well, let's just start with colloidal. And she drank Got it. Got her to drink a bunch. Um, we were, because we had no earlier signs, we were just too late in the whole process to really make any difference. Which is why we went with the more aggressive approach. She was, um, it, it was progressing it was very bad. quickly. Um, and if you've watched our previous video, we lost piglets because she simply wasn't able to care for them. So this was, this was her, this was the piglets, this was a lot she's, of life. She's an incredibly caring, attentive mother. She is. Um, <laughs> she does a fantastic job when she is aware enough to do so. But man, you know, if you've ever been incredibly, incredibly ill, you are not capable of caring. You just, yeah. you just can't. So she couldn't, and it was important to get her get her back um and now she's gone and made herself a, <laughs> a new home out in the middle of her area away from the edge where we were shoinking the piglet it was rough, it was, it was rough. So. <laughs> now the piglet um we had an injury appear on a left knee um we think it could have been a bat bite 
it could have also been a multitude of other things. It could have been a thing. It could have been um, it, something. It could have just been her stepped on it and skinned it a little bit. Yeah. But that hole, from one day, it was fine. They were just little piglet's knees. To the next day, like, oh, there's like a like a wound there. I'm like, ah, okay. Just a little wound. There's a little tough. wound. Okay. In 12 hours, um, we saw larva actually in the wound. Yeah, it was just infested. Oh, God. So we go and we... we, we we're showing the piglet. This piglet does not... Okay. It's really a whole That's ordeal to, to take the piglet from her. She's very protective. So we get the piglet. Um, very nerve-wracking. So we have video of that. Hold the piglet. Look at it. No, no, no. We, use, we use the... Um, call them the magic eyes. Magic eyes. <laughs> Everybody should have a pair of magic eyes. Um, can't tell you how many things this has solved on us on a daily basis. Which are just magnifying. I fix the phone, we fix splinters, yeah. we fix bug bites, we fix us, we fix, oh, there's the a thing in your eye, animals. Yeah. Buy a pair of magic eyes. It's a life, life hack. Um, so we get the piglet, look at the knee. Oh, yeah, there, there's there's so there's larva in there. That's my job. And then she starts going in. And, oh, no, no. It's not just the hole. The hole goes deep up into the, uh, well, if this was the knee, it goes up. And then the larva went further. They were a good inch into up. A, a little piglet like it's only this big. Yeah, the whole piglet's like this big. And they're like halfway up and she's looking, we're like the whole knee joints there. We can see all I the, the tendons. See, like, blood the entire vessel. knee. There's a lot of knee missing. So I started just pulling them all out. That um, fast. We had hours. sprayed it with the purple spray. We had, and we'd even gotten a shot like in it, which burned like the devil, oh, I'm sure. That poor little piglet. <laughs> Ooh, but it had not killed them. Um, it just sort of it, it, it just just with the bleeding and the fluid that it just sort of like self rinsed and also, they were deep enough. Pigs are in mud. It is very hard to keep any sort of a topical anything on a pig. So we ended up. I, I pulled out everything I thought I could. It was it's literally for everyone. Literally, there's thirty, forty of them in there. At least, yeah. With tweezers and things. Pull them all out. Piglet. Okay. Um, no flush way. the wound. And then we packed it with the other red. We use it. Red cream. <laughs> Purple spray and red cream are our are, are, are favorite like go-tos. And again, this is like the super common thing we get locally. It is a red, um, it's meant for topical yeah. use. It's like, a, it's like a gel, sort of. Yeah, it's it's a, like sticky, so it sticks to wounds better. Like a petroleum jelly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's like a greasy, sticky, um, anti-parasite, anti... Biotic, and it's, uh, um, it's a uh, bug repellent, repellent which um, is the main key. <laughs> and it does pretty good. Um, so we took that and we, we we packed that in there, and and I made a little bandage out of mm -hmm. some electrical tape and a little piece of tissue, and looked good and put the piglet back. And then two days later, she seemed pretty good. And then the she could it would definitely have caused nerve damage. She was not feeling it correctly. Yeah. Um, so then two days later, the, the bandage fell off because yeah. piglet. Now she's she's running around and things and stuff. Yeah. Like she's starting to look like like a little, little pepper. Okay, like she's like that's major damage. She's running around. Um, so we got to shoink her again because it, the wound is still open. So we shoinked her again. Man, had that shoink up. is a local shoink. family shoink. shoink. Yeah, shoink. and then run away because oh, Mrs. Yeah. Piggles wants to eat you now. <gasps> she gets mad. It's a tricky. It's a tricky situation. There's a reason we've never got that on film. Yeah, when I brought her back. She was eyeballing me from a hundred yards out, Miss, Miss looking at me like I me. had, the, uh, like, yeah. I was bringing her daughter home after curfew when I wasn't supposed to be with her anyway, kind of look. And Jeez. she mugged me the whole thing. And she, and she was very vocal. Yeah. She does not enjoy. All right. So we pull the piglet again, do the same thing. Um, there was there was nothing alive left. Uh, oh, we gave a, we gave her ivermectin paste. We did give her ivermectin because again, risk of internal the first time. right yeah. risk of internal things. We have to kill the internal things because it's just so deep. We can't reach. I'm not even sure. I and, and then I was afraid I was going to do more damage. We're like poking around. Yeah, we're not we're not going endoscopic here with tweezers. Like like we do so, what we can. No, we did. We gave her the uh, ivermectin. We gave her a little ivermectin mm -hmm. paste. Kill anything internal. Put another band aid on. Um, send her back out. She's already looking like more robust, stronger. It came off. There was a raw patch still. Raw, but but we're like it, at some point, like it looks like the rest of it's the swelling's gone down. It looks like it's it's kind of healing. Sometimes you just need air to like get a thing to heal. So it seems to be healing. Um, I cannot I cannot stress enough how bad that injury was. 
how deep it was. If it was a human, you'd be in the hospital for six weeks with like debilitating, like and all the IVs and all the like. Yep. Nope. Now we did almost give her penicillin. Um, yep. I opted against it. I, we we've dealt with the pigs before, and then man, they just heal real quick. There she is. So a I little really, black one. Black one. So I'm glad we didn't. Um, she didn't need it. Now this is potentially also part of that like general health. They are wickedly healthy little. Creatures. They are. Now. The little white one there. Oh, that one. That one. We call that one the <laughs> top pig now. Um, had uh, all of a sudden a swelling, which could have been hernia, could have been infection. We're like, mm. I think it's definitely infection. When I look at the pictures, it looked like like hernia, which apparently is like happens on occasion. But and he was she, scratching at it. Scratching at it and rubbing against the ground. We're like, so, no, it's bugging. So. We opted on that one. Um, we didn't pull the piglet. Uh, I have a stick with a serving spoon. Okay, it's really weird. It was originally intended to uh, to get like duck eggs that were deep in a stump. We just now use the spoon for other things. It was, it was softy and round. It was literally a, a large dollar spoon that we bought. And then we stuck it on a stick so we could get duck eggs out of a stump. Um, but it works really well. Inverted. In so then we got in and we could scratch a piglet. Mrs. Piggles is kind of okay. We're far with enough back. spoon. Is yeah. Okay. The six foot rule. Um, so I, I figured out that if I scratch the piglet, the piglet will just like roll over because it, it really wants its belly scratched. I can put antibiotic cream on the spoon and I can just rub antibiotic cream all over it and it just likes that. Um, and we did that a couple times, uh, one or two times a day, and it just shrunk. And so it just. Definitely an infection. And definitely time. infection, and it just shrunk way down. Um, <laughs> and definitely seems like that that's a sufficient fix. Now we have a. A piglet pile. Yep. So, you know, we don't do everything holistically. But when you're talking about either a, a, an inaccessible part of an animal. Entire previous batch of piglets? No, we, we had we had multiple issues. Um, but not, not... Not her. Yeah. No. Um, um, she was fine. Yeah. Um, so... That's, that's, you know, when you get to the internal issues or the life-threatening issues, um, I don't think it's necessarily the correct choice to stick to an all-natural approach, if that approach is not working. I think it's important to look at it um, in a bigger picture. Of, is a little bit of antibiotic now better than um, losing an animal? But there's also, antibiotics have consequences. Um, yep. And when you start getting into the, the, the deep research papers, the scholarly papers, the, the industry papers, and they look at this, and, and a lot of them are very like, well, it doesn't affect this parameter and this parameter and certain weight gain by this point, and then the pig is slaughtered, so therefore it doesn't matter. Fed medicated food in yep. a controlled environment, this, that, that, that. Uh. But, but then you get on into some of the other ones that where they, they map the, the, they map the, the, the biota. Um, the biome? The biome in the stomach um, without and with antibiotics, and it is oh, yeah. changed for the life of that mm -hmm. animal, which then passes on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. One dose. So there is, there is changes that happen. Not all of them are known, and this is why we, we generally shy on the very conservative side of like, yeah. not unless it's really necessary. And that's unfortunately a judgment call that you have to make. For your animals and yourself, which is not always an easy thing to do. We we don't ever just go. They're oh, yeah, hurting sure, the thing. There's something. Give them all the stuff. Uh, oh, it's also the easier answer. It yeah. is easier from from our perspective of you just give them the antibiotic and leave. Yeah, it's a lot less uh, physical work. So. But you have to weigh those those options. But it's worth it. Yeah. Um, and now we have a happy Mrs. Piggles, healthy piglets. Um, yeah. and we're going to move on down the road with our plan. Yeah. So that's just where we, where we land on things. Um, there's lots of approaches to all of this, but I think it's, it's not something that is talked enough about that there can be a middle ground with this. There, there's lots of middle ground. Yeah. Um, wherever you are has, you have your own middle ground because of where you are and what you're doing. Yep. So <laughs> that is our our philosophy on on uh, on animal health um please comment subscribe like uh let us know like if you do things differently yeah. if, if this was helpful to you let us know yeah. we like hearing it all right 
Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.